A lot of people might think of the deep sea as kind of an alien world. It is the largest ecosystem on Earth, and yet we know the least about it because it's so difficult to access. But what we do know is that it's in danger of being impacted by human activities. Without it, we wouldn't be able to survive. So it's very important that we learn more about this habitat, and we need some advocates so what we're trying to do is bring the deep sea to the public. We want people to look into this window and be transported to a place where no human has ever been. Technically, the deep sea is anything in the ocean below 200 meters. That's about when light stops being able to penetrate the water. You have extreme pressure, darkness, extreme cold, lack of food, and all these different animals have to figure out how to survive under those conditions. The harder the conditions are, the harder natural selection is gonna push them and create just things that are bizarre. My name is Alicia Batondo, and I'm a senior aquarist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. You want to be a land octopus? Mm hmm? My specialties are cephalopods, and now more recently, deep sea. So when I first started working with deep sea animals, I was really nervous because I thought they were all like super delicate and would fall apart if you looked at them wrong. And it turns out that a lot of them are actually a lot hardier than you would think. We're working with animals in a lot of cases that very few people, if any, have worked with before. So my job is to figure out how to keep these animals healthy. Sometimes there's research, but a lot of it is just us trying to figure out how to get them to eat and just observing them for long periods of time to know what behaviors mean that they're stressed out and what is an indicator that they're doing well and then use that and continue to hone our kind of strategies as we go. One of the most challenging and exciting projects that I've been working on is the salmon snailfish. They're a really interesting weird looking fish that very typical of the deep sea and they have little whiskers on their chins. The first thing I wanted to do was try to get them to eat and they weren't eating. So I read in the literature about how they had taste buds on their little whisker pectoral fins and so I tried touching food to that and it produced this feeding response. It was really exciting because the animals became really um, gregarious, and it was all because of that one little thing. Our work actually contributes a lot to scientific research. We are keeping these animals alive for long periods of time, which allows for observations that would never have been possible otherwise. So scientists that we collaborate with are able to learn more about the behavior and life history of these animals through just us keeping them alive. Oh, is that a snailfish right yeah. there? <laughs> wow, he's a spider, yeah. Hey, that's a good one. There is so much to be learned about the deep sea, but what we do know so far is that it is extremely important and it affects our entire global climate. About 80% of the Earth's primary production is accomplished by phytoplankton on the surface of the ocean. So all of that primary production is sequestering carbon. The driver of that process is the constant replenishment of nutrients from deep ocean water. And at the same time, this is a habitat that is in danger. And a lot of human activities such as um, deep sea trawling um, and ocean acidification are harming these habitats. And so we wanna get people inspired to help. Getting people to see these animals in person, it creates an experience that hopefully will be memorable and will inspire people to wanna to help conserve this kind of habitat. The deep sea is not 
a huge empty barren wasteland. It's like a tropical rainforest in some places. It's full of life. I can't wait to show people some of the stuff that we've seen.